You're watching MPTV. On tonight's panel, we're discussing buying property like a professional. And joining me on the panel, Tim Fletcher from Fletcher's Real Estate, from the REIV, Robert LaRocca, and from Infolio, Cameron Deal. Now, Cam, you're a buyer's advocate. I am, yes. So you go, obviously, representing the person who wants to buy a property at auction. How important it is to have someone like you in, your, in their corner when you go to auction? Obviously, you'll say very important. Well, I think at different, I think at different times it is very important, uh, and I guess in some respects there are people in the market who have the confidence to go out and do it themselves, and there are others that aren't. Uh, and also, when you're looking to buy a home, it can be emotional. So I guess in some respects, what uh, we try and do is keep it analytical. It's a transaction for us, and we remove the emotion from the equation. If you show an agent that you're emotional about a product, it could be used against you. So we're there to uh, eliminate that from happening. I mean, it, it can also happen just because people are time poor. A lot of people just don't have the time necessary that you would want to when you're making that large purchase to do the search or to do the bidding or you know all those different factors that go along with it. That's why we've seen, particularly over the last 10 years, quite a growth in the number of buyers agents out there or advocates. Um, they're a large part of the REIV's membership now um, because a lot of people are using them for that very reason. Tim, was there a bit of argy bargy when they first arrived on the scene, the buyers advocate? You, you wouldn't. They weren't liked by the fraternity, were they? Well, I tell you, when you, when you're acting for the vendor and you're doing an auction, the best thing of all is to have a buyers agent or advocate there. But were you get, wary of them? Because guess at, what? That means there's a buyer there. But, so. were you, but were you wary of them at the start? At the start, was there a bit of animosity towards buyers' advocates? To be brutally frank, there were a few that were super aggressive, mm. and I think it was counterproductive the way they behaved. Some of them, but that was the early days. I think and it we've, sorted itself we've out come a long way now. since then. But uh, I had a few run-ins with a few of the ones earlier on because I think they got. In fact, I think it worked against them in many occasions. I think today they do a great job, but then some of them would be so aggressive... Antagonistic, yeah. ..that it would, you'd get reverse psychology kick in and the buyer would say, I don't care what it costs me, I'm going I'm to beat that person, which is not a good thing, really, because that's not what property, buying property is about. I, I think, do you, do you, think do you hear those right. stories of the old days? Oh, absolutely. The in industry's matured a lot compared to when the first advocates entered the market. Most advocates realise that they must have working relationships with real estate agents. Most real estate agents are now quite reputable. Um, so in some respects, we've seen an improvement in the market and the conditions of the market. You have to, in this, particularly in this market, you need to be a good real estate agent. You need to be proactive to get a result. Uh, advocates are there to obviously buy on behalf of, of a buyer, as Tim has said. Some are paid by commission. You need to be a little bit wary of that strategy on the basis that they're there to be rewarded on the basis of what they pay for a property. Others like ourselves are a set fee for service. You know where you stand at the start and it's irrelevant uh, in relation to what the final price is. And of course you can hire a buyer's agent in different ways. I mean you can hire them to do the entire process from search to bid to you know, the whole execution of the purchase or you can hire them simply to do the search. They might come back with some available property or just if you want to do that emotive aspect and you're not confident about an auction you can hire them to turn up to the auction and, and bid for you. So you negotiate that with them um, and given the number of them that are in the market at the moment you can go through the same strategies that you do to hire a selling agent Correct. and get some quotes talk to more than one you know I think today the buyer's agent um, if people aren't confident as Cameron said I think it's a very smart move to use one the number of people that particularly come along to auctions and I know you buy properties privately etc but yep. those that bid at auctions for people um, get into the bidding quite often very early in the piece. There's no point in sitting on your hands at an auction waiting for someone to bid because as, as an auctioneer, I'll say to people, unless you bid, the property won't come on the market. So once people are out bidding, it's a very free and open sort of engagement of the buyers in the market and the, and the seller can then determine whether they sell or not. But the vendor's agent, the buyer's agent at least, is the one that generally gets into the bidding in a very professional way and that brings other people into the bidding as well. And that in turn sorts out what the property's worth and who's going to buy it. Where would you rather be, Cam, at the, doing the private sale or going to auction? Personally, uh, auctions can be terrific, um, being in a transparent environment where you can see your activity and what's happening. Also, the skills of an advocate to negotiate if the property's passed in are very valuable. Um, but private sales are nice because there's a, there's a number 
Uh, you know what that number is and you can walk away and if you bought it for less than that number, you feel really good, um, not knowing what might have happened if that property went to auction or not. So there is some confidence and a lot of clients prefer that method. There's no pressure involved in that. It's make an offer potentially buy the property or miss it. It's as simple as that. And then conversely, the beauty of the auction is the unconditional sale. You know, it's happened yep. there on the spot, uh, whereas you have the cooling off around with the private sale and the, the sweating there. Yes. Now, and, and Cam mentioned um, the negotiating side of it. If, if, you're, if you've gone to an auction without a buyer's advocate, what, what's your advice for people who then find themselves in a position, properties passed in, time to negotiate, that's where a lot of people feel very vulnerable that they're uh, at the mercy of the, the real estate agent. Well, they would, but the rule's the same, you know, the same as what you went to that auction with. Have an upper limit, have a budget, stick to it. You know, even in the negotiation, um, you have to make that same rational assessment. And uh, we've had the advice on the panel before, you've always got to be prepared to walk away. So, you know, know those numbers up front uh, and don't be afraid to, you know, to do that. That is so true. Stick to your limit. However, there are a lot of people, let's face it, that don't because... As we pointed out earlier, this is an emotional purchase. It's not a commercial mm. thing they're going into. It's it's the kids kicking mum and dad along and the wife and the husband. It's, it really is a seriously emotional thing. It's dad thing. representing daughter, which yes. we often see. Yeah. Tough competition yes. yeah, at most yeah, auctions. Yeah. Dad's, <laughs> dad's helping daughters buy. And the very good agent acting for the vendor should be a very good negotiator. Mm. So if you're not a good negotiator as a buyer, you need the likes of Cameron to be there because I can tell you you'll pay more than you have to if you don't do it that way. Because you're, you're just not tooled I'm, up for the I'm there to take project. every dollar out of the, of the buyer's pockets. I don't apologise for that as the seller's agent. It's actually your legal <laughs> duty. Absolutely. To get as much as you can. Yeah. yeah, my word. All right. And from the negotiating point of view, do you enjoy the negotiating process after a property's been passed in? Look at the smile. Okay. <laughs> the smile gives that away. <laughs> I think more a smirk than a smile, but yeah, a smile. The sourcing smile. of the property and looking at all the properties is, uh, is something that takes quite a bit of time, but the negotiation is the fun bit. Um, Parry and thrust. Taking the punt, being prepared to walk away. Um, I, For example, last week, which might be a very silly example, but for $1,000, I walked away from a deal and surprise, surprise, I had a phone call from that agent a couple of minutes later saying they'll take your offer. Of course you are. Um, they thought I was being silly for not paying the additional thousand, and I turned it around the other way to suggest that maybe they're being silly. So, did you tell them to then take a thousand off, and you're back in, or? Uh, we made it very clear that we weren't paying any more and we were walking away from that transaction. Obviously, that's a, a small example of what we can save, but it's important mm. to save as much as you can. Well, because it's Most the obvious the... argument always used is. Are you going to lose this for a thousand? For the sake Correct. of another thousand, are you going to lose this? And deal? agents are trained to cool to use that as an example. Are you going to walk away for five thousand dollars? Well, yes, I am. Uh, and if you are prepared to walk away, genuinely prepared to walk away, it's an excellent strategy. If you advise the agent, it's your highest and best position. Do you hate the walk away threat? Well, some people walk away, but they just go around the corner and, and come, come back. back. <laughs> you've, you've got to, you've got to pick when they really seriously mean walk away. Mm. And some do they, what do they have a tell like in uh, gambling? Do they touch their nose or do they do something? Body language? Would you just see their back as they walk away? You There's not much back. more to it. <laughs> That's a fairly good indicator the they're away. walking away. <laughs> it's not a good. But you've got to be very careful. Some people walk away and cut their noses off despite their Correct. faces, as we say. You can. Yep. Uh, you can do that. But that's where, that's where the skill comes in in the parties negotiating this as to who actually is bluffing and who's not. And that's where you need skilled people doing it on both sides of the fence. Mm. All right, gentlemen. Well, I don't have to tell you, I'm about to walk away. So uh, <laughs> thanks very much for joining so us on MPTV. <laughs> I'm walking first here. Yeah, thanks. Come Lisa. on, Cam. We're out of here. <laughs>